So we're writing Rhett again, and I'm just going to kind of cut through this video just like usual and pick out the things that I want to talk about, and it won't be just the entire session. So good tr trot transition, and I think I'm having him just kind of like on the bit, working out a little bit of flexion there, and doing a nice downward transition with that as well. So we're just kind of adding in that downward transition because we would do upward ones, or I would just do the trot, and then I would kind of release the reins and he would be on a loose rein. So nice halt too, because he's got to do his, you know, walk transition, trot transition, and then back down, walk and halt for that intro test. So we're just kind of playing with those different things just separately and then letting him hang out here and just stand because he, he definitely needs that. And then I pretty much always start out with the loose rein, sometimes I'll do a specific like from halt to walk so that we can work on that. But I do like to give him breaks. Like we're just specifically working on this transition and then he'll have a break. So I'm not constantly holding him and putting pressure on the reins. So working on that halt with the contact on the reins. Once he is going into the halt from that walk I'm clicking and then once his feet are stopped and he's into that halt that's when I'm releasing the reins and then I'll let, I'll let him sit like this afterward. I want to be sure that I can pet on him um, and put my hands on his withers or his neck or whatever and that he doesn't think that's a cue as well so sometimes we do that to ourselves and we accidentally train those um, and that's not what we want like I'll pet him and then he'll like go forward. If you consistently ask for the forward after you've pet them, then that becomes a cue accidentally. So I picked up the reins. He was doing a nice walk. Good trot transition here. Very nice. And I'm just kind of increasing the amount of time he can um, be, um, be trotting on the contact. So that looks pretty good. A little bit of raising his head up there, but not bad. There it goes kind of back down. I mean, he's going to have those unbalanced moments. Like he's green like we're just starting this and then he comes back down makes that downward transition you can see me there clicking and then once his feet are pretty much stopped then I'm dropping those reins so I'm really working on that upward and downward transition with contact and then I let him kind of cruise around on loose rein for a bit so pick back up on the reins nice walk a good trot transition it looks pretty nice here and I'm, I'm not looking for like nose on the vertical or anything like that he's doing intro like just baby steps here so this is decent for him he's not thinking about getting into canter so oh maybe he is <laughs> okay he is and, and he did a little nice canter transition then you could see there after like a stride or two, he kind of lifts his head up and he kind of falls out. That's what I was talking about in the last video. But then he comes back and he um, relaxes back into trot here. And I just kind of pick up on one rein and I put a little bit of a bend in him to ask him to not canter or to bring him back to trot. Um, and then once he's kind of relaxed back into trot and he was just moving at trot and not thinking about cantering, um, while having contact on the reins, then I'm clicking again and reinforcing. I'll let him hang out here. So I'm going to slide down, pick up on the reins. He kind of slows down there. That was nice. And then I'm asking for halt instead of going forward and asking for more forward movement to put him on the bit. So, but I want to show that little piece there where when I picked up, he should kind of slow down a little bit. And then if I wanted him to continue, I would ask with my legs, I would squeeze with both my legs. And then he would continue with that contact on the bridle. If not, he's going to come into a stop. So that's a little bit of how I teach that. So this is a different day. And I just put these two um, videos together so that I didn't have a million different ones. But we're kind of working on the same thing. Like here, he's just trotting with contact. A little bit of contact. I don't, not even that much. I was trying to do the least amount because he does better on a loose rein or I probably just, you know, that's what I practice more of. So that was what he was better at. But I was trying to get the reins to where they looked like 
I had enough contact, but they were as loose as possible. So I'm just reinforcing that um, there where he was moving nicely at the trot. I also could probably be a little bit better about reinforcing him for him going at longer and longer periods of time at both the walk and the trot while I'm um, having contact. Um, I think I get stuck and I'll be like, oh, well, he's just doing a lap and that's kind of what we're good at and we kind of repeat that a little bit too much. I need to be a bit more progressive so that he can do the whole test like this. Um, and that does take time. So I think that was the other thing was I was like, oh, well, I want to do this show. So let's start practicing, you know, and he didn't really have the timing and the muscles and everything for it that he, you really need. So having more time to do the, put everything together to do the test is definitely uh, helpful as well. So decent transition. And I just um, clicked and reinforced that because he went into the transition nicely with the bridle. And that's the other thing about if I'm not like being super specific with what I'm reinforcing. So what we want to do with pretty much all training, we want to be very consistent. And I'd like, instead of me where I'm picking out different things here, like I clicked him for a halt, then I clicked him for a walk, and then I'm clicking him for a downward transition, like do one behavior like multiple times. So the person is like, okay, I'm doing this well, and then move on to something else, and then move on to something else, whatever. And then once that's pretty solid, then start mixing them up. I think that was another thing, especially with Rhett, because I was mixing like positive and negative reinforcement a lot. Um, he probably didn't know exactly what I wanted at the time because it was like one time I'm clicking for one thing and then a minute later I'm clicking for another. So that can definitely be confusing. So, and, and that's why he really wants to continue repeating those behaviors that I've been reinforcing. So cantering, he's like, well, I'm just gonna offer you this. Um, because that's been reinforced a lot. And I, that, that was one of those behaviors that I'd been very consistent with. with I'm going to click and reinforce every time you canter. Uh, versus not like, oh, just sometimes. So that's another important thing. So decent trot with some contact on the bridle. And I just kind of tap him on the shoulder to, sh to tell him which side the food's going to be on. So like this side, I just kind of tapped him on that left shoulder. He'll bring his head around and he'll grab his tree. Um, and he takes it from both sides and you do want to make sure that the horse is comfortable taking it from both sides and that you do it pretty evenly so that they're not always taking food from one side or the other. So that's just another thing to think about with the positive reinforcement. So I've asked him to go forward. You could see him rock back and then go forward. So that was a good example of that because he was pretty close to the camera that time. Um, his backward cue is both of my legs just behind the girth. And then at the girth as we go forward. So obviously that could be a bit confusing. So that's why he rocks back and then he goes forward. Which I'm I'm not going to fix because, or I didn't fix because it wasn't a big deal. It wasn't like he was stepping backward multiple steps and then going forward. He was just rocking backward. But a voice cue would have helped too to make that a little bit, a little bit easier for him to discriminate with. So back to doing some contact work. So this looks good. He's thinking... He's going into canter. That's actually not bad. That's not a bad canter at all. I think I asked for that one. Um, and that's where we were working at. So he was doing probably half a circle, I think. Maybe a whole circle. At, at, I think that's as far as we got. Um, but yeah, he has a nice little canter. He kind of he kind of lifts up and, and just gets into it. And it, it's really nice. And I like that he can stand still afterward and just kind of hang out. So that's telling me he's not super worked up about it. Um, he doesn't have a lot of like anxiety about it. The canter is one of those gates that a lot of horses feel a lot of anxiety about because naturally it's only used if they're like fleeing, like running away if they're scared or if they're playing. So both of those things are like high arousal states for the horse. And especially when you use just mostly negative reinforcement or positive punishment with like traditional training, natural horsemanship, then that you're using that, that horse's flight response and then those emotions can come up and the horse can have that anxiety. Especially if you're kicking them or using the whip to get into canter, that's definitely very common. Um, and that's the one 
well, one of the many things that I like about positive reinforcement, it was very specific and clear, but then he wanted to do it and he didn't have any of those feelings where he's like, oh my gosh, like they're chasing me into canter or I need to run and do other things. And he's a very forward horse. He came off the track, he raced. So, I mean, that's a huge, huge deal for him. This looks quite nice. He's thinking about cantering, and I just kind of pick up on that left rein there. You can see, because he was on balance too. He was gonna to try to pick up that right lead, and he kind of swung his head. So um, I, I don't want that. I don't really want to practice the wrong lead, especially on balance like that. There we go, much better. You can see that rocking horse there, especially right there when I go past the camera, because I kind of just put my hands down on his neck, because he, he does have quite a bit of movement. Um, and you can really see him just kind of rocking up and just almost cantering in place there. So he had, he had such a beautiful canter. I really wish I could have worked with him more. And then again, he's just standing here being great after doing that little bit of canter. And this is a very good test for how your horse feels about it. If your horse can't stand still afterward, this is really great. I'm actually reinforcing him for staying still, so I need to do that more often. But great test just to make sure that they're not anticipating and that they're like pretty solid with that, that the, they're not worried about going into canter or they're not. They might not necessarily be, especially if you're using a lot of um, positive reinforcement. They might just want to be doing it again and anticipating, which we also don't want. So I like that he can canter and he can come back and relax. So balancing those two behaviors, you get reinforced for cantering, you get reinforced for staying still. And even though I didn't do a great job at reinforcing uh, or at balancing a lot and reinforcing that standstill, he did do a really good job at staying still afterwards. So that was really nice. And then he can also walk off on a loose rein. Another important thing. I love all my horses to be on a loose rein. I want them to be able to control themselves. There's no reason for me to have to hold on to them all the time because that's not a safe horse. Um, if they can only like behave or listen to you or whatever while you have contact on the rein. So, um, and I train them all just on that loose rein to start. So I picked up some contact, asked for a trot transition and he's doing a nice trot transition, not um, thinking about cantering.